hello and welcome to the Pig and Whistle with Tales from Azeroth. As always here at the Pig and Whistle Inn in Stormwind, I go for a variety of subjects with regards to World of Warcraft. So grab a bottle or a pint, sit back and enjoy this midweek episode uh, because we are coming up to 50,000 downloads on the podcast itself. I'm going to go back and uh, take you all the way back to July of uh, what year? 2020. Uh, and do a revamp on my very first episode. So this episode is actually my most uh, downloaded episode, which uh, I'm quite surprised about. I'm not going to lie. I feel like the quality of it was um, a little bit below par, a little bit lower than what I know. And that's obviously because, well, it takes time to understand everything. But we're going to be looking at uh, PvP and uh, battlegrounds arenas stuff along that so obviously times have changed in world of warcraft and we are no longer in uh shadowlands i believe that was when that was created so the gearing is going to be different the look and feel of pvp is going to be a bit different but i'm going to be going over all of the things that are the best about battlegrounds best about arenas worst about them add-ons gearing accessibility to newer players stuff like that but i do want to say thank you very much once again for 50,000 like overall downloads it's really appreciated and i love how much you guys tune in each and every week to uh, listen to some of the random stuff that i have to talk about <laughs> but let's get started so pvp as a whole with of warcraft is a very difficult thing to get into whether you're a newer player or a veteran and seasoned player. Now, these are this is a completely different scene compared to that of PvE, where it's like uh, uh, you're basically going in, just killing mobs, and these mobs have a set spell book. Um, they obviously have like a fireball, a disorientate, and then a root, you know, that sort of thing. You can play around that and you can accommodate for that. Now, obviously, players have their own spell books as well. They only have their own set of spell books. So, shamans will have frost shock, earth shock, healing tide totem, uh, healing stream totems, uh, grounding totems, you know, that sort of thing. But they won't press them in any sort of order. So, you need to be able to learn how to play against this um, and adapt on the fly, essentially, in comparison to PvE, where it's just, okay, they're going to press. Uh, they disorientate now or within the next 10 seconds of started combat with them so be ready to just either stun them all or you know disorientate them or anything like that knock them away to stop the cast etc so pvp in my honest opinion is a tougher thing to do than pve content now you can obviously mythic raiding is very much one of the toughest things that you can do in WoW, and I will agree with you on that. Mythic raiding is a different level completely, I would say. But I would say getting to a higher PvP rating is di more difficult than achieving a mythic um, like raid clear. That's my honest opinion. Now, this is because mythics get nerfed very, very quickly after the race to well first has happened, and they're even getting nerfed during the uh, race to well first because of certain uh, things. Maybe health too much, the health of a boss is too much, or damage is too much, or you know there are simple mechanics that literally cannot be done without everyone in the raid dying or someone being sacrificed. That sort of thing. Um, but I will always stand on the heel that. PvP players that go into PvE will stand a better chance at doing things at a higher level than a high-rated PvE player going into PvP. Now, don't get me wrong. The PvE players are very, very good. But it takes, not, it takes knowledge of the game first, which they do have, but it takes on-the-fly thinking. Now, I'm not the best at PvP. I'm, I'm good. But I'm not the best. These Mythic Raiders will probably do better than me in PvP. But that's my thoughts on the matter. And it's as simple as PvP players can do better in PvE than PvE can do in PvP. And uh, there are some examples of this. I think Trill being one of them where he does both. He does Mythic Raiding and 
is a AWC player, which is absolutely crazy. I think he's like the only one. Um, I don't think there's much others who can do it. And I don't think there's been many experiments conducted for PvE players trying out high-end PvP and vice versa. And True was the only example of this. Um, but we can't really compare it all to him. So, with all of that being said, we're going to start with Battlegrounds. I know, very weird segue. But Battlegrounds are your first introduction into PvP, probably. And uh, these Battlegrounds that you can get uh, vary from Capture the Flag to, uh, like, Base Protect. What What is it called? Not such... Uh, like... But, uh, resource like a resource uh sort of game where you protect the flag and you gain resources for however long you have this flag captured stuff like that um these are wars on gulch arathi basin either storm outrek valley you have isla conquest you have uh, deep wind gorge uh twin peaks you know you've got many different battlegrounds all of them are within the same sort of three genres but they obviously differ in terms of the geometry of the land and stuff like that. Now, Warson Gulch, in my honest opinion, is the best battleground, okay? It's the original battleground uh, alongside Arathi Basin. It's a very simple layout. It's a very simple look. And I love the feel of the half and half um, battleground, essentially. Uh, what I mean by that is the look of it. So on one half, you have the lush green fields, Ashen Vale, stuff like that. And on the other half, you have the barrens and sort of the horde encroaching onto these forests. Um, and that's what I kind of like because you can distinctly know which side you're on just by looking at the map, looking out at the field of battle. Now, I think it's very simplistic in its nature. Obviously, it will be. It was released in 2004. Um, but I think that it is still one of the best battlegrounds to this day. Definitely top two. Um, on the other hand, you have stuff like Arathi Basin. It's a bit different, and you've got to sort of know what's happening within the game and understand where people are going to be going. So if you have three bases captured, let's say the middle... Okay, so the bases are located four bases around a middle base. Yeah? Um Essentially, you have three of these captured in a sort of diamond formation. So you have the middle base and then stables and lumber mills. So, you know, making a triangle. The horde or alliance will have to capture one of these bases to win. Because if you have three bases, you're going to get more resources than the team that has two bases. You know, so you're naturally going to win and get more points. So you have to identify what the most likely target is. And uh, say they go blacksmith, slap bang in the middle. Uh, everyone needs to rotate towards blacksmith, but you need to leave people to defend like your certain uh, other points, so lumber mill and stables. So it's that sort of knowledge of the game that will get you into it. But battlegrounds-wise, fun-wise, playability-wise, I think Arathi Basin is up there. Um, they've done stuff with like the Battle for Gilneas, but honestly, it's too... That there isn't enough to do. So the Battle for Gilneas is a battleground that is very much like Arathi Basin. It is a protect the flag and capture the points. Now, the problem with this is there's only three points. So you essentially get one point each, and then you just have a big fight over the middle one, which is Waterworks. That's kind of it. That's nothing much to it. Um, there isn't a lot of potential for outplaying if you lose the very first fight at Waterworks. So yeah, that's kind of bad, but... Uh, the third battleground are epic battlegrounds. Now, these epic battlegrounds are Isla Conquest, uh, Wintergrasp, Outrack Valley. I feel like there's another Ashran. Um, these uh, battlegrounds are 40 versus 40. Uh, I think one of them is 35 versus 35. I could just be making that up. That might be a Mandela effect or something. Um, but essentially you have different things that you can do within these battlegrounds. Outrek Valley is very much kill the opposition's leader. Uh, Ashran is very much the same. What are the others? Wintergrasp is very much a... You have to run... Wintergrasp is a good one, in my honest opinion. It's uh, The attacking team has to get through the keep and get to the central chamber and essentially click it before the time runs out. 
Now, the timer starts at 40 minutes. Okay, you might be thinking, Jesus, that's a long time. The... Let's take a quick break. Do you like video games, podcasts, and reminiscing? I'm actor, video game writer, and total sweetie pie, Connor Savage McCabe, and on each episode of Call Me By Your Game, I sit down with a guest for an intimate look at a special game from their past. Did you and your dad beat Spyro the Dragon over the holidays? Or was Halo 4 the one thing that united your roommates during your senior year of college? Stories like these are what Call Me By Your Game is about. From video game content creator Janet Garcia to Hades voice actor Courtney Venez, I interview wonderful comedians and game industry friends about these memories. Check us out wherever you get your podcasts, and maybe someday you'll call me by your game. Defending team can't, can just sit back for 40 minutes if they really wanted to. They can. But if they wanted to reduce the time, there are three towers that are in the very south of the map. Now, this is as south as you can get away from your keep. So you need to send people to go and destroy these towers. And for each tower destroyed, you take off 10 minutes. So start with 40-minute timer, and it can go down to a 10-minute timer if you destroy all of these towers within the first like few seconds, essentially. Okay, these towers are very tough to kill, and they take a while. But essentially, if you destroy these and manage to get back to your base, you win as the defending team, because they just won't have enough time to break through the walls. Now. It's one that I've come to love and hate at the same time because if you lose your very first fight in Wintergrasp, the chances of you winning are pretty much 90% in the negative. Like, you have a 10% chance to win, essentially. Um, although I do love it because it can be a very quick battleground. It really, really can, and you can get a 1,000 honour for completing a quest within it. So... You know, an extra thousand honor. I'm not too upset. What was the other one? The Isle of Conquest is very much a mix of the two. So you have to break through the outer walls of the keep and then kill the boss. Okay. This one is very simple, but it kind of stays the same. Uh, it sort of has the same concept. So you capture a couple of bases. These bases have different purposes. The docks. Uh, give you war glaives and catapults. The workshop gives you siege engines and demolishers. And the hangar allows you to fly above the base and essentially uh, parachute in and uh, start blowing up the gates from the inside, which is really cool. Now, after the gates go down, you simply run up, kill the boss, you win. Now, these battlegrounds, all of them, have their very unique purpose within the game. And that purpose, in my opinion is to introduce people on how to PvP. Epic Battlegrounds are very much there for getting more honour. Normal Battlegrounds are very much there for learning your matchups. Okay, Now, I play Battlegrounds not to... I say not to win, but I don't play them for the objective. I play them to learn my class and to understand other classes a bit more. So I actively try and look to pick people off in a 1v1 that way it's still fair around the map because i'm still 1v1ing someone um so it's a 14 versus 14 or 9v9 you know that sort of thing it allows me to learn how they play their class so with the new hero talents that have been introduced a lot of classes have changed the way in which they like can do damage or how they you know do their burst damage etc so for death knights right now i cannot get away from them I used to have a decent time against Death Knights, but they seem so tanky now because of the four horsemen like passives where they get anti magic shell consistently. When they summon horsemen, they get constant damage from their frost fever now, which is a bit weird. Frost fever as a dot is ticking for a lot, and hey, that rhymed. Now, I don't know why this is, but I need to be aware that frost fever is going to add up very quickly throughout the course of an arena now. And stuff like that. So this is the information that you can take from Battlegrounds. And this, in my opinion, is where Battlegrounds are really going to help you get into PvP a lot quicker. And it also helps you just learning your class as well. If you're wanting to try out a healer or a DPS or even a tank spec, this is where you will want to go to test it out. Now, you can do duels. You can, do, you can hit the PvP target all you want. But when you're thrown into it, 
that is when you're going to be learning the most about your class, essentially. Now, before I get into arenas, I want to talk about the accessibility uh, no, not the accessibility, sorry, the add-ons for PvP. Now, people always think that you need 200 add-ons, okay? You need 200 add-ons to even start to PvP. I, when I first started, like, getting into PvP a lot more, I downloaded a lot of add-ons that were recommended. Now, these recommended add-ons were Omnibar, uh, Gladius, um, Ability Team Tracker... And, uh, you know, many others. But the add-ons that I didn't need, I still downloaded. So there's uh, one that constantly speaks to you that says what's been used. So throughout an arena or a battleground, you're going to just be hearing, like, this robotic voice saying Avatar or Bladestorm or Stormbolt. And it can get really annoying. It's overwhelming. Now... I, after a few games, was like, no, this isn't going to work for me because it's too much information. And the way that I see the game, I pick up that information naturally. I don't like need this voice telling me that this has been used because I can hear the sound cues within the game. So I can hear Stormbolt being thrown so I can shadow meld it. I can hear sort of a uh, blade storm. I can hear an avatar. I can see an avatar like being used. I can see sort of an ultimate pen, uh, penitence and stuff like that. Now, all of this stuff will come with time. But for add-on purposes, I will suggest using these four to get you started. Weak auras, because some weak auras towards the later stages will help you. Um, you're looking at Gladius EX. Or any sort of arena frames, because Gladius is the one that I use, um, so it's just that easy. Now you have Omnibar, which tracks cooldowns. You can track whatever cooldowns you want. I personally only track kicks, because I am a caster DPS and healer. And uh, Ability Team Tracker, or something along them lines, because I use this to track my team's cooldowns, so that I know if I'm in danger or if they have something that can save me. These are the four that I've kind of stuck with and sort of simplified it down to for me. Now, you obviously can add a lot, a lot more if you're wanting to, but I would say that these four are very decent to do so and start off with, in my honest opinion. And these add-ons can be very daunting to install very at the very first time and use, but honestly, just if you're a bit worried about using add-ons, do not need them if you're just starting out. You really don't. Um, WoW have put in a sort of arena frames for you now, which you can use, although it doesn't have certain things like diminishing returns, which is a bit awful, I'm not going to lie. If they had the diminishing returns on them, it would be something that probably replaces Gladius, uh, something along them lines. Now, honestly, yeah, if you want to go in with no add-ons and slowly add them over time, you are more than welcome to, and I would recommend it. I'd recommend getting you steel class first and then looking to do the add ons part. But if you want to do everything at once and get used to it all at the same time, you are by all means well within your right to do so. And these add ons will help you towards the later stages of ranking up essentially. So if you're getting or if you're looking to push above like 1800, 2k, 2.2, 2.4, etc you're obviously going to be adapting these add-ons uh, to how you want them to feel. Don't look at other people and be like, yep, that's how I'm going to have my add-ons exactly like this pro AWC player because they're going to take in information differently to how you do. So you've got to adjust it for yourself rather than adjust it for how other people are using it. Okay. Now, arenas and gearing, these two sort of go hand in hand. Arenas are very tough to get into at the start because it's a completely different thing from Battlegrounds. Battlegrounds, you know, if you lose, you're not too upset. If you lose in an arena, you're a little bit more upset because what you do in these arenas matters more because you're either in a 2v2 or a 3v3. So what you do has more impact in the game. Okay. Now, Arenas are very fun. They are the most enjoyable part of WoW, in my honest opinion, when played with friends. Um, people can be toxic in these. If you're doing looking for groups, solo shuffle, don't get me wrong, 
they are. But within any aspect of WoW, you're going to find these toxic people somewhere in the game. And that's the same with PvE. You're going to find them in Mythic Pluses, Heroics, even normal dungeons I found them when leveling in the War Within. Now, you find them in Classic, you find them in uh, Season of Discovery, Classic Era, you find them everywhere in Warcraft, okay? You just have to get over them and, uh, you know, it, accept that they don't really have a leg to stand on sometimes and they just want to cry for, you know, crying sake, essentially. So, Arenas are the fundamental part of uh, WoW PvP endgame for most people. And this is where you're looking to push for your rating, your sort of ranked rating. Now, there is Battleground Blitz now within the game. So you can do Battleground Blitz to push rating, but Arena, I think, is where most people will say uh, or stay for the most part when they want to push rating. For getting to certain points, you get certain rewards. So... Uh, transmogs, uh, uh, titles, and then eventually mounts, stuff like the gladiator mount or the seasonal mount, stuff like that, you can earn via arenas and rated PvP. Um, you are looking at a couple things for arenas. You're looking at the composition of your team. So if you're a mage, you're going to be looking for a rogue and a priest for RMP. Or maybe a warlock and a druid for god comp. I think it's called god comp. I have no idea why it's called that. It just is. If you're a death knight, you're looking for a warrior for TSG. Or what, what else did death knights go with? Evoker. I think they still go with Evoker. I'm not sure what that comp is called though. Flying death? Maybe something along them lines? I don't know. Um, but yeah, you're looking at a composition that will benefit your class. So for me, I play a Boomkin or Moonkin. Um, essentially, I'm looking for a Death Knight. I'm looking for a Shaman. I'm looking for a Warlock, even potentially. Now, obviously, there are certain, there are better compositions that can, uh, like help you out just in a game sense, like. Uh, Boomy DH is one of the better comps that I can run, but I don't really play with any demon hunters, so I'm stuck with a hunter, like Boomy Hunter. Um, again, not the best comp, but it saw some gameplay in Dragonflight, and, uh, you know, these compositions you can get really good at. Some people play one composition their entire life. Some people might just play Jungle, and they'll make it work. Now, Jungle might not be a great composition throughout the entirety of an expansion but they will make it work if you're good enough you can make any composition work as long as you enjoy it okay enjoy playing the arena once you don't enjoy it that's when you need to stop and take a step back and maybe reassess do you want to even do pvp or do you even want to play this class even you might want to switch classes for pvp you know that sort of thing um but arenas are very much where you're going to be tested in your skill level because uh, all of your what you do matters in there, whether you're a healer or a DPS. You need to understand when to use defensive cooldowns, offensive cooldowns, when's the best time to CC, when's the best time to peel um, because you're in, in danger, when's the best time to run away, when's the best time to just sit with your healer, you know, that sort of thing. There's many different things that you can do within an arena that take hundreds and thousands and even tens of thousands of games um, to learn and see that scenario and be able to adapt to what is happening. Now, all of these are very obviously broad statements, but I think arenas are, in my opinion, the most fun things that you can do in the game, but that is a very um, opinionated statement, obviously. Some people might not like PvP, so their opinion might just be doing follower dungeons even now, or mythics, or heroics, etc, etc. Um, Gearing-wise, for these arenas, you get, or, or just in PvP in general, it's a lot more simpler than what it was in Shadowlands. So in Shadowlands, you had to rank up your gear. I've gone through many different um, episodes talking about Shadowlands PvP gear. It's what ruined Shadowlands. I'm not going to go back to it. It's two expansions behind. But in The War Within, it's a bit simplified. So essentially, you get honor from doing any sort of PvP-related activity, and this honor can buy you PvP gear. It will buy you the very basic set of PvP gear. When you do rated 
um, battlegrounds or arenas, you get conquest. This conquest will give you better PvP gear. That's the very simplified version. Okay, nice and easy. If you want certain things for your character, so precog is one that uh, casters use. What precog does is if a anyone misses a kick on you, you essentially become immune to CC and kicks for four seconds. So I want this on my Boomkin, and when I want this, I need to buy a gem now in the War Within and essentially put a socket on a piece of gear and put the gem in the socket. Okay, it's that simple. If you want something that's got embellishments, these embellishments can be very powerful to your character, whether it be give you some extra mastery, versatility, or certain procs to secondary stats. I'm not too sure what ones are in the War Within yet. But these embellishments you simply take to a crafting order and you put put all the materials in and uh, you put a sort of PvP item in there that will increase its PvP item level and you get someone to craft it for you. Okay, it's very simple along them lines. So it's, it's a sounds a bit complicated when you go through the crafting orders and the embellishments. But honestly, it's a lot simpler than what it was previously or it's a lot easier to gear than what it was previously. I will say that much. But accessibility wise for everyone, it's a tough thing to get into. It really, really is. I think it's one of the toughest things that you can possibly ever get into in the game or in any game, to be honest with you, because a game that has been out for 20 years now will, will always have its veterans and you are always going to be 15, 10 years, 20 years, 5 years behind. And these people who have been playing for 5 years will know more about PvP and how to deal with certain scenarios than what you would. So you have to overcome that. And it just takes time. Okay? Do not be discouraged if you cannot win the first 10 arenas, 20 arenas, even 50. If you lose all first 50, that's fine. As long as you're learning something from it, you will be fine. Okay? You have to try and enjoy it. If you don't enjoy it, then it's not for you. If you are enjoying the PvP side, but you're still losing, then it is definitely for you. Because if you're losing and you're still enjoying it, when you win, it will be an even more satisfying thing. Okay? So accessibility, it's not great. But I think that they are trying to make it a bit more accessible. I think that they need to put in maybe a bit more like follower battlegrounds where you can learn your spec and stuff. I think that that's probably what you need to do. Now, there is something along that line where it's called Comp Stomp. And it is a brawl that happens every few weeks. And essentially, it's uh, people on your team are actual people and you're going against AIs. Now, these AIs are a little bit higher scaled at the moment because everyone they, they're in like full conquest gear so they have like four million health more than everyone else um but it allows you to essentially learn your class and learn how every other class sort of works to a very fundamental level i think that they need to add these follower battlegrounds to help people get more into it and it will allow people to essentially become a bit more comfortable with maybe jumping into a normal battleground or arenas and stuff like that so comp stomp make it baseline in my opinion and that will help out a lot of the troubles but that is where i will end it for this episode thank you all very much for the fifty thousand downloads overall honestly it's it i'm very grateful for it and uh, i'm really glad that you guys keep coming back to check out the content and stuff like that do check out all of the stuff down below as well there is constant stuff happening on social medias on etsy's if you want to send in ideas there is a link for that down below as well thank you all very much once again and go a valor friend goodbye all